Hi, uh, this is Charlene's vision. I would like to um, say welcome to the show. This is Noemi Soto. Hi. Now, Noemi, I just met you approximately about maybe a week or two ago, and you just excited me what you have always wanted to talk about, and I just want to say thank you for being on the show. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Noemi. Well, um, a little bit about myself is just I have come from the mm, really difficult situations uh -huh. and I've really just kind of risen above, you know. Um, I've beaten many odds, I, very traumatic, sad, crazy childhood and I uh, was a teen mom at 15, had my son, left home, mm -hmm. and I was really, you know, a single mom really fending for herself with no family at 16 years old. Wow. And I've, I've made it through, you know. Um, I've been in crisis, mental health, everything, and I've pursued education, I've, I haven't, allowed myself to be like limited right. you know yeah, by by the circumstance if they gave me a label it's like okay what's the solution what's the cure you know okay. it's like and and I tackled it and um it wasn't until uh I had lost custody of my sons uh -huh. that I spent two years with a severe depression really lost wow. that um I literally woke up one day and I heard in my head, go find a church. Oh, wow. I was like, that was weird. Okay. You know, I was like, uh. and, um, but the same thing, I woke up, mm -hmm. I opened my eyes, go find a church. And I, I knew it was God, I was like, all right. I ended up rooted in a Baptist church okay. and my life transformed. I found okay. so much healing and hope okay. and inspiration out of, uh, out of the word of God, okay. and I, my life's changed. Right. Okay. I'm on a mission now. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> you all are. Yeah. Yeah, so just please explain, I'm the Eunice Mission, I know you ministry, so you have this thing that's saying BG2G. Yep, bring glory to God. Bring glory to God, amen. Yeah. So just talk a little bit about, you know, how did you come up with the BG2G? <laughs> that's actually a really funny story. <laughs> um, I was living yeah. out in the middle of nowhere we were out in Ashford, Connecticut, and the main grocery store there, um, like, was like half hour away, was um, uh, Big Y. And Big Y is famous for their BOGO sales. <laughs> BOGO. And um, I just, I, I was walking through the store, I had been saved, I was on fire, I was like learning a lot about God and learning about, you know, bringing him glory and kind of realigning right. uh -huh. my life to that focus. And um, I was looking at a B-O-G-O -O sign, <laughs> buy one, get one from, from Big Y. I was like, oh. and no lie, I saw it transform in my head, BG2G. I was like, oh, wow, bring that glory is, to God. That is so funny. <laughs> so you know God transformed those words. Absolutely. You know so you know, he works in mysterious ways. You know? oh, so man. I see that too when you know, he tells me stuff. I'm like, hey, thank you, Lord, because I would have no clue. But that's an interesting story. So let's talk about your life reasons. I know there's a couple of stuff in, so let's go in depth about the healing process that helped you. And you have like about four sayings of what you do. So let's talk about the first one. Well, um, the first one is like, you know, healing is possible and help is available. That's, that's huge. You know, we live uh, in a world today, it's like there isn't enough resources. There isn't, and there is. There is. It's just not advertised. It's not advertised. You know, it's you have to, to go, to. you have to now, ask the right payment? questions. Is, are they, it's a lot of resources I found out, but it seems like they all cost so, they so much, so you know, you can't really afford it. You know, there is, but there's a, also a lot of resources from nonprofits. Oh, you know, yeah. it's more about, Connecting with those nonprofits and and almost kind of pulling teeth, mm -hmm. you know, like 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 when you have a like my son, you know, it's like, hi, how are you doing? Fine, <laughs> you know, it's like, no, 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 you got to ask the questions, and that was that was a journey I had to take, mm -hmm. was learning how to ask the those questions. questions. Exactly. But um, I do, I plug people in. Uh, there's services, uh, even federally funded programs like Cabin. Um, that are state funded that okay. have like 
the listing of all the support groups wow. and things like that. It's just a matter of Fine. getting them. But again, they don't advertise they don't much. Advertise. They advertise more geared towards like services or community agencies, mm -hmm. shelters, shelters, friendship center. You know, now, why like do you that. think that they don't really advertise? You know, they know we need the services. Exactly. But why do you it's, think? It's money. Advertising is extremely expensive. I agree. You know, um, it takes skill. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that skill, and I think uh, pretty much a lot of the entrepreneurs that I know mm -hmm. um, have some sort of their own, you know, desire and spark and creativity exactly. to, to meet that need because right. it's so important. Without advertising, without a good uh, image and everything, it's hard. You're going to have to pay for it. You are. Yeah. And, I, and I agree with that too because I'm like an entrepreneur and I was like, oh man, everything costs, but I want to get out there. I want people to know about me. And I know that's the same way how you feel. Yep. You want people to know about you and how you feel in this BG2G, you know, so you want to spread the word and, and, and you also have some advertisement going on there. So we <laughs> yeah. can actually just show that now just to have that. Okay, show. awesome. So this, this is part of my initial branding campaign. <laughs> it's uh, BG2G free hugs. And um, basically, I wear this. I wear this seven days a week when I'm out in public and um, on the back. Dirty or clean. It says, <laughs> <laughs> it says uh, free prayer as well. And it has like my website information and all that. And basically, um, BG2G is ministry focused. Right. And how long you been with the, you had the BG2G? BG2G uh, came to me in 2008. Wow, so it's yeah. been a while. Oh man, I've been babying this. People are like, you try so hard. I've been doing a lot of research, researching different types of um, like uh, business establishments from S Corp to corporation to LLC to partnerships and wow. everything. Like I've literally learned just on my own devout research. Right, now um, you have like a group of people also, right, that does the BG2G. So, um, People right now have been coming and going. Okay. You know, I do have a, a friend who um, he's been very strong for the last year and a half. His name is Pierce. Mm -hmm. um, but again, things transition. transition. Not everyone has the passion. The passion, you know. That's or how I feel too. <laughs> like you don't feel my passion. You can't know. feel it. <laughs> I know, and and sometimes BGTG is kind of sensitive because it's. It's a ministry. It's a Christian ministry. Mm -hmm. um, so we're held at a higher standard kind of thing. You know, there's just responsibility that goes along with it. And not everyone has that discipline yet, you right. know. Um, so they see the the fire. They see the visions. They see the, the master plan, uh -huh. how it's being structured, how I'm developing it and growing. And they get excited. They want to be a part of it. But... They, I can't allow them to go too far in like leadership roles if they're not playing their part as well, you know, oh, with okay. responsibility okay. and okay. yeah. So let's talk about the labels might present where I am at today, but but they don't um, determine my, my future, future outcome, outcome and they and don't they limit my potential. Anyway. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, that is huge. Um, Believe it or not, I did. I At one point in my life, I was diagnosed with 10 disabling wow, mental health conditions. That's a lot. 10 disabling, I, I, you know, on disability, on social security. And you know what? I was never denied. <laughs> I'm going to put that out there. I was never <laughs> denied social security yeah, because I'd been in the system from, from child. Yeah. I was... My first hospital, running away, I was 12 years old. Yeah. You know, I, the problems were endless. Um, so, so many people I feel just kind of throw the white flag and they're just like, oh, I'm bipolar. Yeah. This is it. This I'm going to be it. stuck. I'm going to be stuck with the social Let security just, check. Yeah. And it's like, no, I couldn't. And do that's it. great that how you just got out of that. You know, like, okay, I'm not going to be labeled. And I, and I get that because I felt I was labeled sometimes as well, like, oh, man, you, you can't do this. And it's like, that made me stronger. But some people don't feel that way. You know what? It's the love of my children, mm -hmm. like my, my babies. Um, I reached a point. I was a single mom. I was going to school for paralegal. 
I was working full time yeah. at Burger King, you know, and I was single mom of two. My son just started preschool. I tried to start two different court cases for child support because wow. they had two different fathers. Mm -hmm. And I collapsed. I just, I crumbled. You know, I couldn't do it. I needed more money, everything. And I couldn't deal with all the stress. Wow. I lost custody of my kids. And it was like, I, I didn't lose. I gave cu them, I gave my custody away. But you still to get kept help. that connection though, right? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, my goal was, I know I'm sick. I know I need help, but I got to get better to get my kids. Right. So it was that mission that I got to get fixed. I can't accept being bipolar and being disabled and not being able to raise my kids. I cannot accept. I love those I words. I can't accept I it. love those words. I love those words. Now, you mentioned that you was on 10 medications, but you didn't tell me how many you are now. I'm on none. Exactly. None. None. And that's just phenomenal right there. I mean, you had you was on 10 medications. I mean, this is just blow me away yeah. because you were on 10 and then now you're not on any. Exactly. How is that possible? You know what? It's, it's not a secret. Doctors, psychiatrists, therapists, they'll all tell you medication is not a solution it is a temporary, temporary it's an aid, aid. It's an you know aid, yeah. and um, I'm not against medication yeah. should I fall into crisis I have a lot of like PTSD issues should I you know my life get crazy you know I might go for medication um but the treatment is talking Resolving, getting resolution Lucian. for the issues Lucian. that got you stuck in the first place. Understanding it, you know, yeah. oh, this would happen. That's Absolutely. why I'm like this because there's always a root to a problem. Absolutely. And it's addressing it. And what I found, you know, um, what was pivotal for me was coping skills. Coping skills was huge. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there is. A, a complete curriculum on coping skills. It's mm. called DBT, okay. Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. Mm. And, um, but it's so intensive that they only focus it on people who are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, oh, which wow. I had at one point. <laughs> had, previous tense. I do not meet any qualifications of that. that anymore. So how do they determine that anyway, all of this? You know, well, see, with mental health, it's a problem if it's hindering your ability to function. Yeah. So, for example, obsessive compulsive, mm -hmm. right? Oh, you could be obsessive compulsive, but that could be a good thing mm. if, if you can make money right. off of it. You could be obsessed at doing research mm -hmm. or obsessed with music. That makes sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It could be a compulsion. Like, oh, right, people know, oh, no, no, no. He's like that with his music, you know, but he's making money. Right. He's he's functioning. Okay. I know? think I want to be good. So, <laughs> yeah. so the issue more becomes is when it's hindering yeah, your hindering, life. When it's hindering you, exactly. that makes sense. Yeah. And I have found that these labels again they, they they don't limit if anything they educate you about something you have at that moment right and now you can you have options you know research what it is the treatment they will educate you on your diagnosis they will educate you on the treatments they give you millions of papers Read it, you know. It's like, it read helps it. out. Yeah, it helps you. Yeah. yeah. So being human is okay, and needing time to heal is part of being human. Yeah, that was really huge as well. In in being able to recover is is allowing myself to to, to take a break. Mm. Um, I grew up. My my mom was the responsible one. She cooked, she cleaned, she worked, she paid the bills, wow. she did all the grocery shopping, she did everything. Wow. Everything, everything. And my father watched TV in his underwear. <laughs> right. yeah, that's, what, that's what he did. And he rode his motorcycle, and maybe he had a job every now and then. Um, and I literally, I saw kind of like both extremes, you know, both extremes from like lazy and then so productive that like my mom, she was so focused on responsibility that she was completely absent emotionally and psychologically. Wow. I don't remember having conversations. I don't remember like, you know, 
eating at the table, dinner table with her. None of that. It was just me and my brother and my sister. So she was just basically just taking care of everything, running, working all the time. Exactly. What about spending time with you and stuff? Uh, no, nothing. We we were latchkey kids. Yeah. So we were stuck in the house. We knew mommy would come and call like, you know, around 12 o'clock or one o'clock and be like, did you eat lunch? And it's like, yes, you know, and <laughs> So um, it, it was hard, but being able to be like, if I'm tired, mm -hmm. it's okay to sleep. Right. You know, I'm not being lazy. You know. Right. Um, and and learning those boundaries, uh, you know, definitely that it, it's okay for me to take time out was it huge. Is. It was is. huge it's, for me. It's okay for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they realize that children are people, and people are all children. I, that's one of my absolute <laughs> favorite, I and mean, these are all my favorite, right? but like, um, it's expectations. Expectations. Uh, parents, true. I think traditionally, uh, grown-ups don't respect their children, and they don't understand. Explain that, respect yeah, their children. respect. Children have emotions. Yeah, exactly. Um, we, all people have emotions. So for example, infamous example is, um, your child is wants to talk, wants your attention. You're at a family party, and they're like, "Mom, mom, mom." <laughs> I've seen it all the time. I'm busy. I'm talking. <laughs> Don't interrupt me when I'm talking. I hear that But then you the ignore the child, child for like half an hour. Exactly. The child, you know, then either wanders off or mm -hmm. he gets reprimanded. Exactly. You wouldn't do that to an adult. Exactly. No, you know this adult, this person is waiting, they're standing, they're quiet. But we treat kids different than adults. Exactly. So what happens is, is that boundaries are warped. Mm -hmm. And then parents are like, I don't know why my child's that way. I didn't raise him to be disrespectful. Respectful. But you know what? You disrespected yeah. them as children. As children. And they don't realize that's all related. And exactly. that's all incorporated in there. And yeah. that makes sense, too. You know, because mm -hmm. I remember as a child, you don't come in here because, you know, you're a child and the grown-ups are talking, you know. And and they just they want to just push you aside yeah so the it works again it, it kind of hurts you later on in life as well because right. you expect things of yourself like you know what I'm a single mom I can't be having this nervous breakdown I'm so stressed I'm being I'm pitiful I'm not a grown-up you know they, 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 you tend to beat yourself up more because you expect that adults should be like at this higher standard and it's not really true. So that was another big part of my revelation was these boundaries mm. um, and kind of finding that healthy balance, right. how to respect children and how to allow myself to be vulnerable and still keep my responsibility as an adult right. in society. You know, was yeah. huge. That makes sense. Now my family of pain today will be the same someone's life tomorrow if I choose life. Choosing life, I am pro-life, man, pro-life. Uh, I was 14 when I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, I had all the isms, all the reasons to abort and everything, and I chose life. And I had no family support. Wow. I left home at 15. I had no family now, support. Now, with a mom like that, that's what I don't get, understand. She was responsible, dedicated. Oh, it's, you know. a, long, it's a complicated, <laughs> a really long story. Like, why would you do that? She was there, you know, you would think. She was yeah. not there, but, you know. At the time when I got pregnant, she had left my father mm -hmm. and um, got herself into a relationship, which turned out to be very positive mm -hmm. for her. But um, you know, she just she she chose the man kind of mm -hmm. thing, oh, okay. you know. <laughs> and um, it was it was uh, yeah. an interesting situation. But I chose life, and my highlight in that is that I assumed responsibility, and assuming responsibility helped me grow, right. helped me mature. Mm -hmm. How many girls, they're like, they have the abortion, and then they stay stuck in that lifestyle of chaos. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, if we assume responsibility, we know we can't party when right. the baby's crying, and we need to leave to go to school kind of thing. Um, it forces us into like growing up, right. maturing, and you know, um, I believe choosing life is where, I, why I am today, where I am, with all my visions, with being able to handle so many responsibilities. Mm -hmm. It's because practice, you know. I know I can go without some sleep, mm -hmm. you know. Right, Children right. make you, you know, exactly. when they're crying. It's like uh, you go without sleep when babies are small. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what is your mission, basically? Um, 
BG2G, my mission in, in depth is, is outlined on the website. Um, it, I'm really out to make an example. I feel like God's called me to make an example that in everything you can do in any type of business, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a clothing line, whether, yeah, clothing line, whether it's a music industry, a TV talk show, right. anything, ministry, you can bring glory to God. There's no, no excuse. excuse. And that, you know? that's a good saying. That's yeah. good that people, because people's like, oh, you know, like you say, you don't go to church often, but you still bring glory to God. Exactly. You know? and, and, that, and that's how I feel too. I bring glory. I'm like, and you can tell and you can feel that God is there. Yeah. You know, it's like, I wouldn't be doing this without him. <laughs> you no, know? no. And I tell people this vision, there are good ideas and then there are God ideas. Yeah. This is a God, God idea. idea. I'm completely dependent. I like that. I like completely that. Completely dependent. Mm -hmm. If I f lose my focus on God, BG2G will not go as far as it's supposed to. Right. You know. Now, what are you doing now to, for you? What are you doing now for BG2G? Right now with BG2G, um, I am preparing to launch the Center of Nazareth. That's really huge oh. for next year. What's Nazareth, what's that about? The Center of Nazareth is my baby baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I call it a support group metropolis um, center. Oh, wow. So you could picture kind of like a mall uh -huh. with all different types of stores. Um, what I see is like a smorgasbord of support groups like you know what I'm gonna go to the center of Nazareth and uh, I'm gonna try this you know class on depression I'm gonna try this class on you know awesome. um, Just like bipolar ball. yeah it's like and it, it, to run on schedules like I, it's it's so complicated but it's it's so it's so needed the idea is to bring support group services right. Um, and under, to, under the public, one building. to the public, free of charge. That's, that's amazing. Okay? Free of charge. So behind it, in order to have anything free for the service, you need campaigning. You need fundraising. Right. Everything. And, and that, you need some people to like speak actually to that be familiarized with what they need to do. So how, how the funding comes? Uh, you know, the funding, there is people, there are people with money who have a heart for entrepreneur, but they want to invest in something that has their ducks in a row, mm -hmm. something that's going to have, you know, speak to them, that's going to be long lasting, yes, yes. is something sturdy and stable. Okay. So, um, you know, I do, I'm plugged in, I have networks, uh, people who have contacts that have no entrepreneur, um, philanthropist. They right. know philanthropists who have money would be willing to invest in a Christian organization. Um, campaigning is out there. It, it, it's really, it's really out there. It's out there. It's about campaigning to the appropriate uh, audience. Right. And I believe I have the skill. It's just a matter of okay. time. <laughs> now, if you had something to say to the audience, the people that's watching, what would you say to them? In one minute. <laughs> <laughs> one minute. Wow, well, you know, um, bring glory to God is, is a mandate, and it's possible. It's possible. There's nothing else in life worth doing than serving the one who made you, who loves you, who knows everything about you, what you like, what you don't. And his plans are to prosper you and not to harm you. Mm -hmm. And... It's exciting. I live an exciting, exciting life because I serve my God like in everything. So, yeah. well, that's great. I mean, I'm glad to have you on the show. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I said, it was just powerful. I can feel the vibration. I can feel your excitement. You know, and you are happy. I mean, you know, you couldn't say this like like you said 15 years ago. No. So you're in a new place right now, which is yeah. good. And that's where we all should be, like in a good place. We all should feel happy. And like you said, which is which is good, and some people don't know, is that you can do anything and still serve the anything, Lord. Anything, anything you do and still serve. So that makes sense. You know. So as long as He's in your life, you're always gonna make it. Yeah, so, you know, BG2G, bring glory to God. Okay, everyone can do it. Everyone can do it, even in the smallest things. 
from small to big, we can do it. Okay. Oh, good night, everyone. Thanks for watching. This is Charlene's Vision. Um, you can check me out on www.charleneswinton.com. And we can check um, mm -hmm. Noemi, Noemi Soto at bg2gct.com. That's Bring Glory to God, Connecticut.com. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>